Have a good day everyone. This presentation is all about the African Revolution, Intellectual Revolution in the 20th century. In this presentation, we will be able to define what is African Intellectual Revolution and to explain different perspective of historians by Marx and Dyke and to identify the advancement in modern science and scientific thinking and controversies. What is the intellectual revolution all about? Peoples of Africa were subjected to exploitation and robbery by the capitalist maritime nations of Western Europe and other marauders. Millions of sons and daughters of Africa were transported as slaves to faraway countries. Karl Marx's perspective about Africa was a warrant for the commercial hunting of black skins. The invaders destroyed Africa's ancient civilization, disease, and laid waste here and natural wealth. By the end of 19th century, almost the whole of Africa had been conquered. The Britain, France, Portugal, Belgium, Germany, and Spain are brought beneath the alien yoke of a handful of European powers. Her people deprived of self-government, or which means self-control alienated from their ancestral lands and driven to work as forced laborers on white-owned plantations, mines, and other enterprises. The son and daughters of Africa are the key figures. The other way to say is, the son and daughters of Africa are the important person. How did the revolution advance modern science and scientific thinking at the time? The young African states need to abolish illiteracy, backwardness, and economic dependence in order to train their personnel from amongst their own people to administer and develop their countries. They need to Africanize their civil services and administration, meaning to bring under the influence. They are also left behind by colonialism and they need to catch up with the advanced countries in order to overcome this, they need a rapid industrialization and economic development by land reform and improve African agriculture and to raise the low living standards of the masses. These are the controversies meet the revolution. The African people or the sons and daughters of African people transported as slaves and send it to faraway countries, break up of the colonial system of imperialism which was inaugurated by Great October Socialist Revolution. Lastly, the people of Africa have swept forward to win freedom and independence. Pan-Africanism and Negritude, this is the first innovative works in Africa intellectual history. So Africa used historical linguistic to understand the intersection of ideas about public healing and social organization. Intellectual historians of gender have shown how ideas about production, masculinity, and femininity have informed competing nudes of authority. By early 21st century, Global intellectual historians began demonstrating how Africans rework European political ideas into local vernacular debates about the past and how Africans have shaped the making of the modern world. Africa is known to be the oldest civilization in human history, with a rich and diversified history of science and technology. The construction of a complex state structure is taking place in northern Africa where Egypt, Nubia, and Axum are located. Because of the early state systems that were created around the Nile River, Africa became re-owned as the cradle of civilization. Cradle of civilization, it is like any location where civilization is understood to have independently emerged. Hieroglyph this is a writing system invented by Egyptians. It was used to sketch on walls, pots, and other clay items. It is also the world's oldest writing systems. Papyrus. It is a writing material made from the papyrus plant. It was used as writing material as early as 3000 BC or before Christ. This lineage and culture of achievement 
though emerged at least 40 years ago in Africa. Unfortunately, few of us are aware of these accomplishments, as the history of Africa beyond ancient Egypt is seldom publicized. The vast majority of discussion on the origin of science include only the Greek, Romans, and other whites. But in fact, most of their discoveries came thousands of years after African developments. The remarkable black civilization in Egypt remains alluring. There was sophistication and impressive inventions throughout ancient sub-Saharan Africa as well. Surely, only a few of us know that many modern high school level concepts in mathematics first were developed in Africa, as was the first method of counting. More than 35,000 years ago, Egyptians scripted textbooks about math that included division and multiplication. The distances and angles were calculated. They considered a circle to have 360 degrees and estimated the pi at 3.16. Last 8,000 years ago, people in present desire developed their own numeration system, as did Yoruba people in what is Nigeria. The Yoruba system was based on units of 20 instead of 10 and needed a significant amount of subtraction to determine number. Another achievement in science and technology in ancient Africa is astronomy. Several ancient African cultures birthed discoveries in astronomy. They charted the movement of the sun and the constellation and the cycles of the moon. They divided the year into 12 parts and developed a year-long calendar system containing 365 and one fourth days. Clocks were made with moving water and sundial-like clocks. The Dogon U of Saturn's rings, Jupiter's moon, the spiral structures of the Milky Way, and the orbit of the Sirius star system. So the reason why they knew about this because hundreds of years ago, they plotted orbits in this system accurately through the year 1990. The Dugan people of Mali amassed a wealth of detailed astronomical observation. Metallurgy and tools. Many advances in metallurgy and tools making were made across the entirely of ancient Africa. This includes steam engines, metal chisels and saws, copper and iron tools and weapons, nails, glue, carbon steel and bronze weapons and art. Evidence of iron metallurgy can be found in portions of Nigeria, Cameroon and Central Africa in 2000 before Christ era. Ancient Africa also have an achievement in terms of architecture and engineering. Various past African societies created sophisticated belt environment. The buffingly raised obelisk and the more than 80 pyramids. The largest of the pyramids covers 13 acres and is made of 2.25 million blocks of stone. Later on, in the 12th century and much farther south, there were hundreds of great cities in Zim Zimbabwe and Mozambique. The cities featured huge castle-like compounds with numerous rooms for specific tasks, such as iron smithing. In the 13th century, the Empire of Mali boosted impressive cities, including Timbuktu with ground palaces, mosques, and universities. Along the Nile River, Egypt's African kingdom built a wide range of structures and monumental architectural movements. These are the Pyramid of Giza and the Great Sphinx of Giza. Many treatments we use today were employed by several ancient peoples throughout Africa. Some of these practices were the use of plants with salicylic acid for pain, kaolin for diarrhea, other plants used had anti-cancer properties, caused abortion, and treated malaria. Medical procedures performed in ancient Africa before they were performed in Europe include vaccination, autopsy, limb traction, and broken bone setting, bullet removal, brain surgery, skin 
grafting, filling of dental cavities, and stellation of false teeth, what is now known as cesarean section, anesthesia, and tissue cauterization. In addition, African cultures performed surgeries under antiseptic conditions universally when this concept was only emerging in Europe. Lastly, the navigation. Thousands of miles of waterways across Africa were trade routes. Many ancient societies in Africa built a variety of boats including small reed-based vessels. Sailboats and grinders, structures with many cabins and even cooking facilities. The Mali and Sunghai built boats 100 feet long and 13 feet wide that could carry up to 80 tons. Contemporary, scientists have reconstructed these ancient vessels and their fishing gear and have completed the transatlantic voyage successfully. Around the same time as they were sailing to South America, the 13th century, these ancient peoples also sailed into China and back, carrying elephants as cargo. Now, let's talk about the perspective of Kenneth and Walker Dyke. Dyke born on December 17, 1917, and died on October 26, 1983, at age of 66. These are the idea or perspective of Dyke, but first let us talk about his idea of African personality and capability in the next slide. Dyke's ideas of African personality and capability. Dyke is a postgraduate student at the University of London. He swiftly responded to Eucentric views about Africa in general and perhaps article in particular, Dyke perspective of oral tradition, Alagoa, Ozegue, Tawono, and Afigbo, these are the eminent scholars agree that Dyke is the prime mover of the new African history and historiography. Prime mover, it is like someone who has a lot of influence in starting something important. Dyke is very determined to put his brilliant idea about cultural interdisciplinary approach into practice. He used two independent disciplines of economic and history to explain the European political economic power play. The Alagoa, Ozegue, Tamono, and Afigbo, these are the several eminent scholars agree that Dyke is clearly the prime mover of the new African history and historiography with much emphasis on African initiative, epistemology, and African-centered perspective. Professor Dyke was the first to draw the attention of the international country to the fascinating outlines of a viable African epistemology. In 1830-1885, to the Dyke's classic magnum opus, Trade and Politics in Niger Delta, which was his doctoral dissertation in Oxford, convincingly demonstrated that African historiography was as respectable as the European perspective of others' fears of history. So this is the last idea of Dyke, and which is about the cultivation of historical consciousness. We all know that through political Development can only take place on a basis of profound self-knowledge so long as the African is regarded as a man without a culture and without history, doubts concerning his ability to govern himself will find credence.